So up to this point, we've been looking at logic gates as an abstract concept. Of course, you do need to understand that logic gates do physically exist, which is why in this particular episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually talk a little bit about, you know, how things are like physically in the real world. You're watching episode 5 of Logic Components. Hello and welcome back to Logic Components. So, when we actually talk about logic gates on an actual circuit board, what do they look like? Obviously, they look nothing like the symbols we've been using. In fact, they come in these little chips. They're called integrated circuits or IC chips for short. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a physical chip that I can show you, which is why, well, we're gonna have to work with a 3D rendering instead. Essentially, the chips look something like this. There is a little silicon body and a whole bunch of legs. In addition to that, there's actually this little notch cut into one part of the chip. So of course, we're going to look at all of these and try to understand why they exist, why they are set up this way. So first of all, if you were to actually pick up a chip and look at it, well, it's not going to give us a lot of information about, you know, how it works, where the inputs are, where the outputs are. So what we have are these things called schematics. Essentially, a schematic is a logic diagram, but it is drawn in the shape of the IC chip. So it basically tells you where the input pins, where the output pins, as well as what processing happens between them. And before we actually go and look closely at the diagram, there is one thing to point out. Well, an IC chip kind of looks the same whether you hold it this way or this way, and that is why they actually have that little notch cut into the chip itself. In fact, the notch is essentially the upwards direction. When you're looking at a schematic, note that the notch is drawn as well and is normally, in fact, almost always drawn at the top. So when you actually want to figure out which pins do what, you do have to hold your chip in the correct direction. And to do that, you look for where the notch is. It should be at the top, not at the bottom. So then, let us actually take a look at the chip itself. Now, this particular schematic is that of the 7408. Now, the 7400 series of IC chips is a pretty popular series, I guess normally used a lot for academic purposes. They've been around for many years, and I guess the reason why they're still so popular today is because, well, they're pretty easy to understand, and hence, helpful in an academic context. Anyway, this is the 7408, the quad AND gate. And well, essentially the idea is you have four different AND gates laid out in this pattern. Now, right off the bat, you realize that, hey, there are two connectors that I've never seen before. This one labeled ground and this one labeled VCC. So what are these? Well, guess what? Logic gates do actually require power as well. Now, I guess the concept might be a little bit strange in the beginning, but I mean, just think about a NOT gate. If I were to give it zero, in other words, no power, how is it able to somehow produce a 1 or a high as an output? Well, it's got to get, you know, some kind of electrical input from somewhere. So yeah, that's what the ground and a VCC means. Now, VCC is your actual high, in other words, normally a 5 volt input, whereas of course your ground is just a return path for the current. The first thing you want to do before you do anything is to actually hook these two up. Once you have them hooked up, you can then use, well, your logic gates like you normally would. Essentially, if we were to just look at one of the actual gates, essentially the idea is if you have 5 volts going to both these inputs, then the output will also have a 5 volt output. And otherwise, you will not get your 5 volt output. Simple as that. In an academic context, what we can do is we can have one or more of these chips and stick them into what is known as a breadboard. Essentially, this is a board with a whole lot of holes in it. And well, if you have multiple chips in there, what you can do is you can provide an input voltage, start powering up the chips, and you can start wiring the chips in whatever ways you want. So yeah, this is just your simple academic way of actually playing with logic gates physically. The whole idea behind including this episode is to hopefully give you a better understanding of how things work in the real world. So yeah, from the next episode onwards, we will return to our abstract theorizing. 
But yeah, essentially that's all I wanted to cover with you for Logic Gates. From the next episode onwards, we're going to start looking at the actual components. That is, of course, still created by Logic Gates, but now, well, working on a higher level, I suppose. But yes, that is for next time. As for right now, well, we're done for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Hello, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember that I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more updates outside of YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 0612TV. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.